Here's the brief news from the world over this week. A little more than three weeks to the election, the race for president is as fluid as ever. The latest polls indicate that Donald Trump's strong debate performance against Hillary Clinton on Sunday has helped him recover from the release of a 2005 video where Trump made lewd comments about women. Of the polls released Thursday, a Rasmussen poll shows Trump in the lead. Another shows a tie. And still others show Clinton with a five to nine point advantage. In the meantime, both campaigns are busily swatting down the latest controversies. Trump is emphatically denying media reports from four different women, alleging that he inappropriately touched or kissed them. The New York Times and the Palm Beach Post on Wednesday reported stories of three women making allegations. Separately, a People magazine reporter wrote a firsthand account of being attacked by Trump while interviewing he and his wife Melania. Trump denounced the Times story as a total fabrication and asserted that the incident cited in People did not happen. His campaign has threatened to sue. More later in the show. And there are also troubles at the Clinton campaign. The most recent batch of documents released by the watchdog group WikiLeaks is creating headaches for Hillary Clinton. Emails appear to show top members of her campaign mocking Catholics and evangelical Christians. Clinton campaign chairman John Podesta and communications director Jennifer Palmieri are central to the email dump. In one email, Catholicism is derided for its, quote, severely backward gender relations. Podesta, a Catholic, would not confirm the authenticity of the emails and said he didn't recognize the communication. Another 2011 email from Sandy Newman of Voices for Progress to Podesta called for a Catholic spring in which, quote, Catholics themselves demand and end the Middle Ages dictatorship and the beginning of a little democracy and respect for gender equality in the Catholic Church, end quote. Podesta indicated that a subversive movement was already in place via two groups condemned by some bishops, Catholics United and Catholics in Alliance for the Common Good. GOP nominee Donald Trump was quick to weigh in, and Catholic League President Bill Donahue is calling for the Clinton campaign to fire Podesta, for attempting to manipulate public opinion within the Catholic Church. Also, part of the latest round of WikiLeaks documents, allegations of corruption involving the Clinton Foundation and Haitian earthquake relief in 2010. According to multiple reports, top foundation and State Department officials may have given financial priority to contractors working in Haiti with close ties to the Clinton Foundation. Bernard Sansarik, former president of the Haitian Senate, now a U.S. citizen, blasted the Clintons, accusing Hillary Clinton of abusing her position as Secretary of State and prioritizing access to what the State Department viewed as a gold rush for her wealthy donor. He alleged that the Clintons stole billions of dollars from the sick and dying. And in a follow-up to a story we covered last month, a coalition of religious and civic leaders have denounced a report by the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights, which said religious liberties significantly infringe on civil rights. It claimed that many use the pretext of religious doctrines to discriminate. Dr. Tom Farr, director of the Religious Freedom Project at Georgetown, said the country's founders would be scandalized by the assertion. Signers included Farr, Archbishop William Laurie of Baltimore, chair of the U.S. Bishop's Committee on Religious Liberty, and leaders from evangelical Jewish, Muslim, Baha'i, and Mormon communities. There were also a few secular leaders thrown in for good measure. And he is the first American to win the Nobel Prize for Literature in more than a decade, and the first musician. Nobel laureates for literature include George Bernard Shaw, Hemingway, Moriak, Eugene O'Neill, playwrights and novelists. But this year, Bob Dylan, best known for the times are changing and blowing in the wind, has been awarded the Nobel Prize. While some are celebrating the break with tradition, at least one Scottish novelist was not impressed. 
This is an ill-conceived nostalgia award for senile, gibbering hippies, according to Irvine Welsh. He's the author of Train Spotting. Personally, if they wanted to honor lyricists, what about Stephen Sondheim or the Bergmans, Oscar Hammerstein, Irving Berlin? The times have a changed. And finally, I got such a fun video this week, I had to share it with you. Lucas sent this in after reading Will Wilder, The Relic of Perilous Falls. Look at this. It is a very, very great book. I love it. Very great and adventurous. And I cannot wait for part two to come out because it is just a very great book. Thank you. Lucas, fear not. Will Wilder, The Lost Staff of Wonders, book two in the series, is coming on March 7th. You can pre-order now. In the meantime, it's not too early to start your Christmas shopping. The first Will Wilder book is available from the EWTN catalog online and at bookstores everywhere.